Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Happy Easter. Our Mass this morning we offer for the repose of the soul of Michelle Campionello on her anniversary. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee. After John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets hear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple. But the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to, the, failed to understand the teaching of scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was um, walking through the city. Uh, yesterday afternoon and uh, as I was walking along I was asking myself what signs of new life can I see? Well there's new life in nature there's new life in the buds that are beginning to come forth and in the flowers the daffodils certainly that are breaking out all sorts of signs in nature of new life. And then during the week, I had my car MOT'd. So that MOT certificate, that's a sign of new life for my car. But you know, it occurred to me yesterday as I walked through the city and through the shopping center that probably the biggest sign of new life in St. Albans this weekend is the reopening of Wilco's. <laughs> new life. But you know, these signs of new life can only take us so far. You see, the buds that we see sprouting and the flowers that are going to come forth, they will die. And one day, sad to say, my car probably won't pass its MOT and it will die too. And Wilco's, well, for now, things are looking up. But whatever the new owners or the shareholders might hope, I doubt that Wilco's is going to survive forever and ever and ever and ever. And it's this new life, forever and ever and ever and ever, that we celebrate as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus will die no more. And in this, Jesus is different to the cycles and the seasons that we have here on earth. 
And this way, Jesus is so different to my car and to Wilco's. For Jesus Christ lives forever and ever and ever. And it's this eternal life that we as a Christian community proclaim to the world at large. It's this eternal life that throws this world and all that we experience within it into a radically different light. This eternal life that transforms human suffering. This eternal life that overcomes sin. This eternal life that paves a way through suffering and through death. This is what we rejoice in this Easter weekend. We rejoice fundamentally in a God in Christ who shared in our humanity. But more especially, we rejoice in a God who in the person of his sons, Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead and ascension to the Father, invites us to share in his divinity. We shall live forever and ever in communion with the Father. That, if you were brought up on the old catechism, the penny catechism, were some of the first truths that we explored. Who made you? God made me. Why did God make me? God made me to know him and love him and serve him in this world and to be with him in the next. God creates each and every one of us for eternal life. And we enter into that eternal life through the waters of baptism. Water that is a sign of death. It's something in which we can drown. But water which is also a sign of life. Something that we need to live. So yes, today we give thanks. Not for a Christ who is risen from the dead for a time or for a season, but for a Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever and ever. Amen. you'd like to stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness for our sins. <coughs> Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
With confidence, let us turn in prayer to the Father, who is the source of life and the giver of every gift. Let us pray for the Church in her proclamation of Christ. May, be, may she be a beacon of hope to the world at large. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those in public office that in the exercise of power and authority, they may serve the common good, protecting the dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those baptized, received and confirmed this Easter. May they be always open to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for this community. May our celebration of Christ's life, death and resurrection unite us more closely to Christ and strengthen our resolve to love one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick, that as Christ was restored to life, they may be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, for all who have died recently, including David Grundy, Helen Bothwick, Teresa Griffin, Mary Hodgson, Jean Mullen, Caris Newton, and Anna Trulio. And for all those whose anniversaries occur about this time, including Michelle Campaniello, <coughs> Kath and Patrick Joe Moran, George and Rose Watkins, and Kathleen O'Brien. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Calling on the intercession of Mary, Mother of the Church, we pray, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, in his triumph over sin and death, Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, leads us back to life in you. Mindful of the love which gifted Christ to us, we ask you to grant the prayers we set before you, through the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. We sit for the offertory and the preparation of the gifts.
holy sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only a safe word for my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to forewarn you that this coming week our Mass schedule is slightly different. There's no evening Mass tomorrow, Bank Holiday Monday, and there's no morning Mass at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Apart from that, just to thank everyone who helped make this Triduum, this Holy Week, such a wonderful celebration. And to wish all of you, your families and those dear to you, a very happy Easter indeed. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.